Wow, well, friends and family, welcome to this evening. Your Friday session, day eight of this 21 days of encouragement. And I don't know about you, but I feel so encouraged to spend time in the Word of God, spend time on my knees praying for this nation, praying for the nations of the world. And uh, I want to tell you, let's go for it. Don't hold back. And tonight, I want to encourage you with this one word, hunger. A hunger for God. You know, um, I've seen it so many times. And I remember in Malawi once um, having an outreach and feeling very tired because sometimes in Malawi, especially if uh, Uncle Stephen Lungu and people like that organizes it, then you have eight or nine outreaches per day. And so we were probably on the eighth outreach for the day. And there was this lady and I was sort of but complaining in my head, wanted to murmur because, hey, sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you just feel like, whoa, I just want to go home. I just want to lie down and just sleep through the day. Maybe you feel a bit frustrated today. But this lady, I realized, was walking for three days to come to church. Three days to come to church. And I realized, like, wow, because there's such a need for fellowship, such a need to hear the word of God. And I want to tell us, let us not lose our hunger in this time. Hunger for God, thirst for righteousness. You know, being in Iran one day. And uh, meeting a little boy, nine years old, that would every morning from 2 a.m. till 8 a.m. sit under the kitchen table with a little flashlight reading his Bible. Because if his parents found out, he would be persecuted and probably thrown out of the family or maybe even killed. But for six or seven hours, he would read and read because this was the bread, the spiritual bread. Don't forget that man shall not live but by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so you and I can fill our appetites. We can determine our appetites and the desires in our hearts. You know, if you're going to eat junk food, you're going to crave junk food. You know, and I don't like broccoli. Please don't send me broccoli, but praise God at this stage you can't in any case. But, you know, if you eat vegetables you begin to train your body to eat vegetables. And so, I trust my <clears throat> wife doesn't hear this, but you train yourself. You, have a, you, you create an appetite and a hunger inside of you for certain foods. You know, just like, I don't know about you, but I have a sweet tooth. So, sometimes in the cupboard, around about 10.30, I don't know, it kicks in, a specific type of tooth that kicks in at 10.30 in the evening, then I stand in front of that cupboard, almost like I'm worshipping that cupboard, you know, and I open the cupboard, and I know there's no sweets in there, but I will still go look, you know, because I don't know if the finding is better than the sweets itself, but hey, I crave for that sweet, or when I wake up after a nap, you know, then I think like, oh, I just want some sugar, you know, but see, why do we do that? Because our body craves for something, but spiritually, you need to crave for something. And is that the word of God? And I want to encourage you, don't let your appetite go into worldly things. Don't let your desires be focused and distracted on worldly things. This is the time to press into God. This is the time to enhance that hunger and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, create a deep, deep desire so that deep can call unto deep. Listen to this, Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be full. What a promise. It's not going to be half empty. It's not like, oh, you're going to eat. And then you're going to think like, no, sure, I must go to another place. And I remember once going to this guy. I was preparing myself. I was not eating the whole day because that evening we were invited to these super rich people. And so um, we went there excited and really i thought like this is going to be the greatest meal ever so we went there to somerset west up onto the mountains at a beautiful view of this whole area and um, the guy said yes we're gonna barbecue and i thought like steaks the best whatever you can have that's going to be it you know and so then i realized like sure uh, this guy just had two little small packets of sausage like these thin sausages you know <laughs> And that's what we brought. I thought it's like maybe uh, eat it before the big meal. Maybe they're hiding the big meal. But then I realized like, no, that is the meal. Um, I've never found 
somebody so stingy. <laughs> I actually, when we drove back from Somerset West that evening, I said to my wife, Louise, I said, Louise, do you know what? I'm hungry. Let's go to Steers or McDonald's or another place, uh, you know, because I'm actually haven't been full at all, you know. And that reminds me that in this time when we're under pressure, when we're challenged, this is the time for Christians to be givers. Don't be stingy. Give, you know, because the more you give, the more you're going to receive. And especially spiritually, share with your friends, share with people. Maybe record your testimony for a minute and send it to a lot of your family members. Put it on those family groups. Send it to some people at work because people have a lot of time and they are bombarded with information. But now is the time to share messages of hope. So we're talking about hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What is righteousness? It's to have a right relationship with God, to stand clean, forgiven, pure before God in our hearts. So righteousness starts with the condition of our hearts, for they shall be filled. Sure. Not like me driving back and say, oh, I'm not filled. You know, I had this expectation, but that expectation was never met. Because I put a certain, I was prejudiced concerning this person in a positive way, thinking like, oh, we're going we're gonna to really have a lot of meat here. But God never does that. You know, when you and I search for him, when we seek him, that's why I say seek, ask, knock, then you will find. It will be open for you. Uh, but there's a, there's a discipline of seeking, of hungering. And so I want to encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to birth that in your heart. Just a deep desire for the things of God, deep desire for the word, deep desire for fellowship with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. And I know our flesh, it gets tired, it gets distracted, we're worrying sometimes, we're thinking about this lockdown time, and we, we're not encouraged. But that's where God says, blessed are you. Blessed, it actually the word blessed there means to be happy and envied. <laughs> that even some others will become jealous of what's happening in your life. But a good jealousy. Uh, maybe sometimes there's going to be some people that are negatively jealous, you know. But a jealousy, like the same God is a jealous God. Did you know that about you, about me, about what we spend our time with, what we fill ourselves with? If it's going to be pornography, other things, hey, God is a jealous God, you know. He wants to be Lord of everything, of our physical, emotional, and the spiritual. So I want to challenge us and encourage us and ask the Holy Spirit to birth that deep, deep hunger inside of you. I've seen that all across the world, you know, um, just remembering one day going into Pakistan and giving people their first Bible in China, people that's never had a Bible. The people cling to the Bible, and this was their most valuable possession, you know. But the other day I was standing in the shop and a lot of people were standing there and I was looking at this one guy standing in front of me with three trolleys full of food, you know, obviously because he responded in fear. He said, look, yeah, I need to stock up because this, I'm not going to have any food. And I thought like, wow, how many people in our world are even physically hungry today? So let's not forget those people. Nothing wrong with stocking up. But, you know, I looked at this guy's trolley and I was actually so sad because I thought like, wow, guy, you are going to build your life around fears and not around God. And I don't know if he has a relationship with God. I trust that he'll get one. But there are so many people because this morning when I woke up, I was thinking about the guy that comes to look through the trash every day in front of my house. And I thought like, wow, he's got a family. He's got two children. Now he can't walk around on the street. He's sitting at a home and he feeds his family out of my dustbin. And I was heartbroken and said, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Because a hunger is not just for God, but it's for what God is hungry for. When you begin to ask God and say, okay, Lord, this is tough for me, but I want to know what your heart breaks for. And when God begins to open that in your life, Oh, you can begin to pray. You can begin to speak God's life over this nation, over your family, over that loved one that is not saved. You know, and so I want to challenge you. Ask God. Ask the difficult questions. But think about what is on God's heart. Not just about, hey, I want to receive. I want to be in a comfort zone. Oh, Lord, protect me and my immediate family. You know, we've been giving out some food to people in the hospital and some toiletries through the body serve account and through relief life and it was just it's just so amazing to be able to bless other people in Stellenbosch there are 600 students 
that we're giving food to, uh, food parcels and gifts, because lots of people are lonely. You know, the other day we decided we're going to make pizza and we're going to just tell our neighbors, hey, at that time we're going to give pizza over the fence to you. <laughs> okay, so just receive it. Just uh, We just want to bless you. We want to be a blessing to the people around us. And that's my encouragement, but also my challenge to us. Don't just be stingy. Don't just hold on. This is the time to see faith in action. And it starts in our heart that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Not through works, right here. But then it must also flow over to loving our neighbors. So I want to pray for us for a deep hunger for God. A deep hunger that God will break our hearts in this time. Especially for the poor. Don't feel ashamed if you have a lot. But don't hold on to it. Just share. Share with your family. Share with your friends. And see how that is going to open doors for the gospel of Jesus. Especially in this time when so many people are desperate. But I want to encourage you. Let's keep on doing the works of the kingdom. Let's keep on focusing on what is important to God. Not just focusing on our own needs. And especially not getting frustrated or irritated. But get into the word. Read the word out loud every day. Proclaim it. Put on worship music. Uh, surround your environment with godly thinking and meditation. So let me pray for you for that because the Holy Spirit wants to do that in our hearts today, especially as we go into this weekend. Father, I want to thank you for everyone that can hear my voice. I want to thank you, Father, that you encourage us, strengthen us through your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, tonight we want to ask a serious question is that you will break our hearts for what breaks yours. Father, there's so many people that are just so desperate. Lord, the people in our squatter camps, Lord, the people in hospital, Lord, we're praying for those, Lord, who are in the health working departments, Lord. We pray for doctors, Lord, that's not been at home for days. We pray, God, for those who are just locked up in little rooms. We pray in this time that you bring a revival, Lord, that people will cry out to you, not just binge watch, Lord, on TV and series and stuff like that. But Father, create a hunger in our nation and in our hearts. For you, Because, Lord, you said when we seek you with all of our hearts, we will find you. And, Lord, we want to love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our soul, all of our strength. Lord, let your kingdom come. We pray that in Jesus' name alone. Amen.